Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for bearing with us um, in, on this very warm day. Uh, thank you, Kamanaka Hitomi, to be with us today. Um, this was a very, very impressive film, and um, me as a researcher, having researched Fukushima for at least three years, it, it completely opened a new perspective to me to see the actual people uh, and, and their fate and how they struggle. Because as a lawyer, as a legal academic, we're somehow remote from the, uh, from the scene sometimes. And thank you for bringing it so close to us. Um, my first question to you mm -hmm. is um, about the subtitle of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the subtitle of the film says, Sentaku suru hitobito, the people who are making a choice, mm -hmm. if I get that well. Can you tell us what you, what you were thinking about when you chose this title? Uh, so uh, I put this subtitle. Uh, people who make choice. And then a distributor at the theater uh, of this film uh, told that, or maybe people think that uh, Kushima people who could escape only made choice. That's how people recognize this subtitle. But I told them, told him that, so everybody making choice, if they thinking like, oh, I don't do anything. I just stay and uh, I, I keep uh, living like before us uh, March 11th, even though th th this kind of people also making a choice. So everybody making a choice unconsciously, but consciously. So uh, in Japan, there was a big argument. So people who escaped from Fukushima really criticized by people who are stayed. And also, people who are stayed criticized by people from outside of Fukushima, oh, you are so ignorant, and, and then you are killing children, and, and you don't know the risks of uh, radiation or something, you are so idiot or something like that. So then, so people are so kind of involved in conflict between uh, oh, this kind of situation is safe, and this kind of situation is uh, dangerous. But the situation is same situation, and the two kind kinds of sides started kind of uh, fighting each other. So it was really bad situation. So the the contestations between the victims, and also I understand blaming of the vi the victims. I yeah, blaming each other. Yes. But uh, I, sh I felt like I should respect uh, every choice. So that's how I, I, I kind of approached to people in Fukushima and, and uh, also uh, people who are living in contaminated area. Yeah. And there's this parallel. Um, if we remember, uh, there w there's this scene where the doctor in uh, Belarus uh, describes that uh, some victims are blame blamed for drinking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you've mentioned the social pressure in Japan, the social pressure on the victims. I, I think there was one scene when a woman said, I don't want to be with a minority group. Uh, maybe can you tell us a little bit more about that? Hmm. I'm a one of minority in Japan. So many famous uh, uh, writers and also journalists and also a specialist of of radiation and, and, and uh, a nuclear, saying, oh, this kind of situation in Fukushima is safe. So if you, you say something, oh, th here, th here is, there's, there's a, a contaminated hotspot there, and this is too high. So if I say so, people uh, call me, uh, you are spreading a bad rumor. So, so people st stopped saying it. So it's a reality. So it's, it's contaminated. But if you say so, you are really uh, criticized strongly. So people, people really scared it. Yeah, yeah, you're raising a very important uh, aspect, a very important aspect of the problem is the reputational damage. Um, because actually in any nuclear accident, the uh, amount of, of reputational damage financially exceeds the actual damage, for example, with agricultural produce. 
uh, this is what we can observe. But let, let, let's come back to the film once more. Um, I wanted to ask about your camera. Uh, you have a camera woman, her name is uh, Iwata Makiko, I think. And what I found when watching the film was very often I found the camera was directed as uh, on, the, um, on your uh, protagonists from below. Was that a conscious decision or is it just my perception? W was it something to stress that your protagonists are actually active and they're taking, they're taking action instead of simply being victims? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I have a camera person, Makiko, and also I do camera. Yeah, so uh, sometimes I really need to intimate question or intimate interview. So I go by myself alone. And uh, the position of the camera, uh, yeah, mainly from below because mothers are uh, um, kind of almost with their children. And the children's eye position is so below, that's why, yeah, so uh, camera always uh, same position of children's eye. Yes, yes I understand. Mm, I that's understand. why so it looks like yes, below. Yes, mm, yes, mm, yes, mm. yes, yes. Very interesting. Um, talking about the protagonists in your film, um, we realize that it's the, it's the children who are the protagonists, the children, but mm -hmm. also it's mm -hmm. the mothers mm -hmm. who are the protagonists of yeah. your film. Um, so um, I, I'm curious whether this was also a conscious choice of yours or whether you simply realized that you have to incorporate the mothers so much while you were doing the film. Mm. So before March 11th, almost of Japanese never thought about we have so many nuclear power plants, 54. And uh, even professor at the university surprised, oh, is there so much? Or something like that. And uh, in Japan, uh, mothers are really isolated from a social issue. I don't know other countries, but uh, I traveled and I lived in Canada and also United States, and then I feel like uh, Japanese women are trained that not interested in social issue and not be political. And being political is such a special thing for mothers. So they are really concentrate uh, about how to care their children how to take care of their husband, and no matter about social things. So, but I really need to provide information to kind of ordinary popular mother, mothers, what radiation does to human body, or what's happening in Fukushima. And it's not only happening in Fukushima, it's the issue and problem all over Japan. Uh, just recently, uh, association uh, did the research, and then they researched urine, uh, took from Fukushima people, and took from other area. And uh, they found out that it depends. So if you live in Fukushima and you're taking care, of, really conscious about what you eat, then cesium, cesium-137 ratio is low. But you live in Osaka and you don't care about the, what you eat, then cesium ratio is high. So it's no matter you live in Japan, where, but it matters what you eat. So then after four years, the contamination of soil is concentrated in Fukushima, but foods were spread over. So this is a Japanese government policy spreading uh, contamination all over Japan. Yeah, I understand. Mm, that's so why I really w wanted to uh, access to mothers because, uh, how to say, against nuclear power plant or against this kind of government issue, we don't have so much people. I demonstration yeah. uh, or saying something and such a small number of people doing it and uh, I feel like uh, I need more people yes, to, yes, to, yes. to yeah. take action but so it means that I need to provide something some point of view by this film so 
if I, if, if ordinary mother in Japan feels like, oh, Kamanaka's film is a scary one, so then they don't come to theater. I understand. Um, I think food mm. safety is, is a very important matter, and I'm sure we can come back to that. But I want to return to the, uh, to the activism, to the activism yeah. of, of the women that you've mentioned. Um, and particularly in comparison to other uh, places, I know that you've worked not only in America, in Iraq, in Belarus, in Japan, and even in Sweden. And um, so I would be curious, because this is also relating closely to our research, when we're looking at disaster victims, um, not only how they are protected by the government, but mm. also how they mobilize themselves and how people mobilize for the victims. Maybe you can share a little bit more uh, about how this activism, how the demonstrations uh, in Tokyo and so forth, how they happen, how you perceive that in comparison to other places you have been. Mm. Yeah, so um, it was 2010, and uh, uh, in Fukushima prefecture, so that, that uh, uh, nuclear power plant which exploded, number three. So Fukushima Prefecture decided to use um, uh, mixture fuel, plutonium and uranium. This is a special uh, fuel for nuclear power plant and, and it's dangerous. And then uh, people uh, in Fukushima asked me to come to Fukushima to against this policy. Then I went. It was uh, April 2010, the six months before the disaster. So then four people at the uh, city hall wait, waited for me, and they were holding a banner saying that uh, uh, stop using this special uh, dangerous uh, nuclear fuel or something like that. And they s said anything, nothing. And why are you are silent, I asked. If you say something, if you, you, you make voice inside of the, of the uh, city hall area, we cannot be here. It, this is a condition. We, we have to keep silent and just standing and holding this banner. And then, then I met a um, guy who is uh, responsible about this um, using special fuel. And I told, you know, uh, how risk it is. And then after you use this fuel, even though you didn't get any accident, then after use this this special fuel, you have to keep 50 years inside of the pool in, in Fukushima Prefecture. Don't you think it's such a ridiculous and, and risk things? And then he said that, uh, you know, we accept this, and then uh, government to pay us uh, 20 billion yen. So uh, we already accepted it. I understand. Only four people yes, yes, are yes, there. Yes, yes, but yes, then yes. after March 11th, in Tokyo, suddenly millions of people started a demonstration against um, nuclear power plant using, and then, but the uh, government policy never changed. So then, uh, little by little, people are kind of giving up. Yeah, so, yeah. so now, demonstration is keep going, every Friday night, but numbers are less and less. Yeah. And uh, the campaign, uh, so this disaster was too bad, but the result is luckily, it wasn't so much kind of campaign, it's so strong. You walk uh, Tokyo City and then every uh, station are full of poster. let's go to Fukushima, uh, let's eat Fukushima, and let's meet the Fukushima people. And the Fukushima is recovered completely. And, and, and um, uh, government recommend schools to trip to Fukushima all over, from all over Japan. <laughs> it's really so you're, strong. So you're mentioning the, the role of the government in this. I think something uh, our, our audience would be interested in mm. is that um, I've read that you had um, government funding for your filmmaking before, and afterwards uh, your funding got cut. Is that, is that a true story? 
I got it because I proposed to to, to uh, Ministry of Culture, you know, we are using so much nuclear power plant, but people are not understanding about it. So I like to make a film. Uh, I interview both side people, and then uh, I get a kind of various kinds of uh, opinion in my film. So then uh, Japanese people started thinking about what kind of power we are using. Then um, they liked it, and they gave me grant money. But after uh, I completed this film, uh, Ministry of Business and Commerce didn't know I got this kind of uh, yes, grant yes. money, and then film became so uh, popular. And he found, they found it. I got this film, got uh, uh, grant money from government, and then they were so angry, I heard, and then complained to Ministry of Culture, why you gave this? But you know, uh, so they have no communication in between. <laughs> many, many ministries, they are just doing their own work and they never communicate. But this, that time, they, so, um, uh, they complained to Ministry of Culture, and, and since then, I couldn't get any grant. But it's not, uh, I don't have any evidence the reason why they, yeah. they don't give me a uh, grant anymore. I understand. Mm. So I will ask one more question, and then we will open uh, for, for the audience to ask questions. Um, the, uh, the last question I would like to ask you relates to the second uh, location where you were uh, shooting the film, uh, which was uh, Belarus. Um, I've, all, I've visited Japan many times, I've also visited Ukraine, and uh, I was curious to learn why you did go to Ukraine, where Chernobyl is actually uh, situated, and why did you go to Belarus instead? Mm. The pollution came from Chernobyl, Chernobyl uh, power plant. 45% uh, went to Belarus area. That's one reason. But uh, so the most uh, biggest reason I chose Belarus is I met the small Nikoa. Uh, you that met the small? S the doctor. Yes. The female doctor. I met her in Japan. So uh, people who are doing rehabilitation for children, Chernobyl no Kakehashi, so they invited her to the, Japan. The bridge to Chernobyl. Mm, yeah. yeah. So then I met her, and I really fascinated. Oh, so I liked her. So that's why I wanted to uh, see how uh, Smolonikova, Dr. Smolonikova, is protecting uh, their own children. So she, she certainly is a, is a fascinating uh, character. Mm. Yeah. And also Belarus, is the political, is political situation is something similar to Japan. In, in what way? In what way did you perceive it as similar to Japan? You cannot say clearly. This is so, so because uh, Lukashenko is a uh, um, Prime Minister, I think. Yeah, Prime yeah. Minister? Um, Prime Minister? President. President. <laughs> yeah, President Lukashenko saying Chernobyl is over. You shouldn't use the word Chernobyl. But the people are saying, yes, yes, okay, 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 you are right, mm, 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 mm. then they are doing different. <laughs> so I thought it's similar to Japan. The government says something, but they are doing differently. So that, That's quite a, a rare thing for Japan. Uh, or I, would, I, would, I would perceive it as a rare thing for Japan that, mm. that people disobey the government and they, regardless, uh, do do what they think is right, or do you think um, it's it's nothing new after Fukushima? Yeah. So, but uh, so we can. I th I I thought we can do it. That's why. Okay. Oh, this is a way that. So government says safe. So you are kind of pretending. Okay. Okay. You're right. But you do right thing. <laughs> this kind of attitude. Uh, I think we can learn. I thought that this is something that Japan can learn. Mm, 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 and right. Uh, also referring to the the quote of, of the woman where she said Japan has to change. Mm. 
Um, so maybe that is closely related to what would your conclusion be? From you have documented, you have been documenting radiation in many countries. You've documented radiation in Japan for many years. Mm. Um, maybe that's that's the last thing um, we would like to hear. What what is your conclusion from from the documentation that you have done? Yeah. Mm. So after people encountered contamination of radiation. And then also this disaster uh, gave us such a big question. How to you so do you live after this disaster? How? So do you change or not change your life? So this kind of question everybody received. And then so I think many, many kinds of uh, answers should be exist. But the Japanese government forcing to only one way of live, one way of lifestyle. But we, we are living in democratic country, so uh, I'd like to show that many, many choice. There are many, many uh, ways to, yeah, you can decide. But the, you see, you saw in my film, mother the thinking, oh, we need to, follow what school says or what government says. But there's a way. So it's not the only way. This is a conclusion. And also, we can protect children even though after this disaster, because uh, Belarus, Belarus, uh, mothers in Belarus has been doing rehabilitation so consistently. That's why. Uh, such a small numbers of children can receive these rehabilitation services in Japan. So I like to spread more uh, children can receive these rehabilitation services in Japan. Yeah, that's why I, my film is very important. So people have to know it's important. It, it's necessary. But they don't know, even media people, what rehabilitation is? What are you talking about? A kind of a question. So every time I really uh, teaching them <laughs> and, and also by, by this so film. You, you see mm. yourself not only as a documenter but also as an educator in, in a way? Mm, but I like to make a foundation or um, like a, for rehabilitation mm, for children. It's a big foundation if we can create then we can provide financial support to uh, citizen groups which are already uh, helping children. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, I am sure there, there will be some, some questions. I came from Canada. Um, I've seen this film um, uh, several times. Oh. And then it's, it's, it's really a successful film, I think. Um, I have uh, two questions to you. One is, is that um, with this film, you are um, against the, the Japanese government. Not only that, you are against the men as well. Then I do think it is difficult to cultivate the audience because like, you are really like pushing away the government support and then also the Japanese society support, which is like a very male dominant. That's one thing. Not against things. So uh, many, many audience in Japan watched my film. So they said that there are no enemy in this film. Yeah, so not against things. I'm just offering uh, action, taking uh, concrete action, which can protect children from uh, radiation. So uh, against, against action taking so much energy, so it's not suit to mothers to do. That, that's my opinion. And uh, fathers are really uh, supporting those haharenja. That's uh, different from other uh, mothers because so many, many divorce happened after this, uh, uh, this disaster. And um, Haharenja can be appear in my film. The reason because their husband 
said, yes, you can do it. This is a different. Mm. I'm not against and just showing. Yeah, sorry. The second question is that um, before your screening, I saw the film Going Against the Grain in Fukushima, which is about supporting the people in Fukushima making a rice and then they try to make it into the safe food and then, you know, that's Japanese eat, you know, people eat oh. that Fukushima. Tenka wa? Uh, ten, ten ni nobi, nobiru mura? Ten ni sakaeru mura? I don't know the Japanese title. Uh, it's just like a going against in Fukushima. That's that's that. Okay, so so it, it's a this film about the farmers. That's right, making mm. a rice and mm. making the, you know. Yeah, it's a but north part of Fukushima and not so much polluted, that's and right. they are successful. Right, so and their rice not contaminated. Right. You know why uh, Fukushima Prefecture decided to use uh, their own products rice for uh, school meals. Yeah, so the limit of contamination level is uh, 20 becquerel per kilogram. And, uh, but they could choose uh, another rice from safety place and zero becquerel. But, but they chose their own Fukushima products for school meal. And it shows that, so they won't clean up uh, rumor, Fuhio? The, the, yeah, the reputational damage. Repu reputational damage. So, but it's criti kind of sacrificing uh, children. So you see, children is, in Fukushima, children are uh, eating Fukushima rice. Isn't it safe? Don't you think so? Even children eating it, and they are, they are so healthy, or something like that. But you know, uh, that film uh, shooting precise village, but other villages more contaminated. That's a very low contaminated area. But how about other farmers who are cultivating much more contaminated area. And their rice is much more contaminated compared to that village which is in that film. Yeah, so we, we can't say this is okay, that's why every Fukushima is all right. So various situations. So we have to uh, research uh, this area soil contamination is this much. Like Belarus, we need to have map, a uh, soil contamination map. But government, I asked the government uh, directory, uh, it's a new ministry. Oh, reconstruction, the ministry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I asked the uh, uh, prime uh, daijin, what's that? Minister, yeah, so I, I asked the former minister, why you, you don't make a soil contamination, contamination map? And why we, why, why we don't have it? And he answered, hmm, I don't know why. <laughs> what? Yeah, they don't want to make it. Yeah, so but uh, according to this kind of map, Belarus, created more than 400 law, new law to protect uh, people who are living in contaminated, contaminated area. But we, ha we, we have only one new law and they didn't put any budget of what, two years and a half. Into the decontamination, or into, into what? Uh, this uh, law, it's called Kodomo uh, Hisaisha Shienho. Mm. Children who have been subject uh, to the disaster. disaster. Yeah, so this law says that uh, we, so people who escaped, people who stayed, and the children uh, get the rehabilitation. This is right. And also, people had the right to get the compensation. And, and the very good law, uh, it followed the Cher Chernobyl law. So, but the government didn't put any budget for two years and a half. 
law is there, but never work. And then citizen group started to uh, sue this government, why you don't put budget? And then after three weeks, they, they just put a small budget uh, into this law, but it doesn't really functioning. Mm. Yeah. If I may borrow your microphone, um, it's, it's maybe interesting to know that at the same time, uh, the Japanese government um, uh, paid at least uh, 50 billion euros to uh, Tokyo Denryoku, to TEPCO, in order to facilitate the compensation. And um, they also subsidized uh, the company in general. So that puts it in a different perspective that if you mention that this, this other body didn't get any funding at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we have a few more questions. So just recently, I met several people who are saying that, uh, oh, it is very difficult to say no to uh, nuclear power. I asked why. So they said that uh, uh, if I say some opinion clearly, maybe other people who have a different opinion get hurt or something like that. <laughs> and, but uh, so, you know, uh, government likes to, to regenerate nuclear power plant, but already 623 days we survived without any nuclear power plant. And uh, this reality, always, uh, already uh, Japanese people uh, started feeling, oh, maybe we are all right, because we just uh, care that if we uh, lack the energy, we don't have enough energy, that's our worry about not using a nuclear power plant, but we could survive already more than 600 days without a nuclear power plant. Well, why we, we, we keep going? So this kind of way of thinking, many, many Japanese, I, I feel like 80%, more than 80% of Japanese people thinking like this. So, and uh, local people also, they knew they couldn't escape without uh, exposed Radi by radiation once if nuclear power plant exploded. So this kind of feeling, uh, now it's balancing and uh, maybe you look like it's impossible to uh, stop Japanese government to regenerate uh, nu nuclear power plant. But we don't know. We are really fighting underground. Uh, grassroots people are uh, many, many uh, kinds of actions they are taking now, and it's really different from before March 11th. And the media doesn't tell what those people are doing. That's why it's invisible. But I know because I, I'm really uh, going around all Japan and meeting those people, and they're really doing a good job. And uh, I have hope we can stop nuclear power plant to regenerate and uh, keep going without uh, using nuclear power plant and surviving Japanese economy also. Yeah, <laughs> this is it my, my opinion. It's my opinion. Is it okay? <laughs> Maybe you don't agree, but this is my opinion. You mentioned that you also talk to uh, officials but they don't appear in the movie. I've been making film uh, about this issue for a long time. So I already made three films about nuclear, and the third one was about uh, government policy. And also I combined uh, Swedish government policy in, in one film. And when it was showing at, at the theater in Tokyo, March 11th happened. And uh, so I call it nuclear trilogy. And then so official people already appeared in my past film. And then people knew in Japan how they are, what is their opinion. And, uh, but in this film, uh, that wasn't my purpose to show those kind of bureaucratic opinion. It, it's a waste of time, I thought. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see many, many uh, government opinion, official opinion on paper and, and, and TV, TV program, but not uh, those people, never those people appeared in mass media, so that's why. Yeah, this question. We, we saw the mothers, how happy they were to receive mm. vegetables from other parts of the country mm. considered safe. But we never, and, and how grateful they were for the support, also mm. not only for the vegetable, but also for the moral support. Mm. Um, we did not hear that they f felt uh, disappointed, left alone, stabbed in the back by the majority of the Japanese population, which m might not really care so much anymore about the people, oh. even though you stress that uh, the food from the Fukushima area is actually spread over the country and they might have even good reason to worry about themselves. Mm. Yeah, that's a difficult. Mm. Yeah, to survive uh, living in Fukushima, like doing uh, those mothers doing, it's very difficult now, much more difficult than what I was, sh I was filming them. The situation is worse and worse, and uh, so community people are already kind of uh, looking at their activities uh, with a kind of doubt why they, they need to do that, because already a uh, safety announcement of uh, Fukushima foods are there, why they need foods from other place. So, but at the beginning, uh, those mothers didn't know what to do, and they were so kind of, I, I felt, oh, they are so weak. And uh, they, don't, they don't have strong will to do. But uh, I just really uh, kind of followed and, and spent time with them. And then, uh, but so in, in, in their mind, uh, so their strong will grow, growing up, and then now, I think they are very strong to determine what they do. So the complaining is not so useful. So they, they, they have their own supporter everywhere in Japan. So they connect and they communicate and they uh, visit them with their children to, for rehabilitation. So that's why, hmm, yeah, they're isolated and they feel like they're a minority, but they know they need to do that, that's why. So they, they keep doing it. Yeah, isolation is, yeah, hmm. So that's how I, I'm showing this film around, all around Japan and, and, and finding people, new supporter to them. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, what I need to do. Over the last couple of years in Japan, there's been a lot of discussion of a manga that's, uh, I think it's Oshinpo that uh, discussed uh, the idea of... I know, uh, Oshinpo. Yeah, yeah, mm. uh, that uh, talked about nosebleeds. Uh, and, and some of the people in the film were talking about nosebleeds as a possible side effect. Um, do you have anything to say about that, or what are people are saying there in Fukushima about yeah, the meaning so of that? I, I, I told that uh, I filmed 400 hours, footage is 400 hours, and I never just looked for uh, children who breed, breeded nose, nose breed? Who nosebleeds, yeah, who had nosebleeds. Nosebleeds, but I met many, 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 many uh, children got the uh, nosebleed. Mm. And uh, so there's a research in Belarus. Uh, after maybe one year or two years of catastrophe, they did research uh, around 2,000 people asking, did you have nosebleed? And then uh, more than 84% of people experienced nosebleed. And after 10 years, they did, did, they did a question to the same people, 2000. Uh, they still had it. And uh, in this film, 
a single mother escaped from Fukushima to uh, Yamanashi Prefecture. Who, so so he, she has a boy and, and, and two girls and, and one girl uh, had a newborn baby. So uh, she started breathing now. And she started feeling uh, strong fatigue and also dizzy and also uh, like a what do you call it? Shuyo Maka? Truman Maka? Truman Maka? Tumor. 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 So, so blood testing. So she did blood testing because she is she's feeling so bad and uh, blood testing says uh, tumor marker is became, became high so now she is under uh, exam, exam, yeah, examination medical examination I really worry about hmm. yeah not not side effect, side effect not scientific evidence relation between radiation and nosebleed, but the fact is there. Many, many uh, children, I really watched directly and also they say so. Maybe uh, scientific evidence came later on, but I, I hope a uh, researcher researches it. Uh, I am missing the, the public protest in Japan in general against the nuclear power energy. Uh, but you said they are working in the underground. So, uh, but why you are not using the, the public and the media? So like just after March 11th, so many people uh, did a demonstration, but the government didn't change anything. So that's why I think almost of uh, people kind of gave up. Uh, by demonstration, we cannot change the government. And uh, so that's why the numbers be became less and less. And also, I feel like uh, in Japanese educational system, uh, Japanese ed educational system really trained people, don't do it. <laughs> don't be political. So in the 70s and, and in the 80s, we had a big demonstration against Narita Airport and many, many. But they all failed, not successful, Any, not, no success. So young, young people uh, really learned from those, their, their father's age uh, experience. Oh, so our fathers did a did a kind of stupid thing. And, and if you do it, you cannot get a good job and you cannot get any uh, respect from uh, society. You called like a terrorist. So the repetition of a demonstration in Japan is really, really bad. It's too bad. So I'm teaching at the university and uh, I'm asking them, so who are you, you interested in demonstration? And everybody says, <laughs> but just recently, uh, we had a kind of a secret uh, law started. And uh, so university students group started a demonstration with uh, hip hop music. Yeah, so they're very good demonstrator in a new way and uh, looks really cool. They really care about their fashion and uh, now they are really active. But not numbers, I think they, they're really doing good job and, and uh, they, they are using YouTube shooting themselves and they're putting on YouTube, and everybody see what their message is. And uh, uh, I hope they, they, they keep going. Mm. Yeah, but uh, you should know, it's very, very toned down uh, demonstration people, because society not allow. So it's, it's out, of, out of, if you do it, People recognize you as uh, out of society. So people are afraid of it. 
Mm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Before we uh, thank you again, I would like to express my gratitude once more uh, to the Volkswagen Foundation who has funded this event, um, to the project, research project of uh, Goethe University and Professor Belz uh, who have supported this and um, also to the team of Nippon Connection. And um, if you're interested in uh, uh, Hitomi um, Kamanaka's uh, other movies, please Google her name. And um, if you're interested in our research um, on protecting weak groups and interest in East Asia, you can Google uh, protecting the weak. Thank you very much. Uh, please join me in thanking uh, Hitomi once more. Thank you very much.